nuclear plant were given some disappointing news today. Two employees who had been missing since the March 11th earthquake, earthquake and tsunami that destroyed the facility have been found dead. Meanwhile, the operator of the plant also says attempts to plug a leaking duct have failed. A crack in a basin behind the Unit 2 reactor is believed to be the source of an alarmingly high radiation level noted in nearby seawater. Attempts to seal the leak with concrete didn't work. Crews are now expected to fill the crack with polymer. We're joined by Akiko Fujita with ABC News. Akiko, first of all, what Tim more can you tell us about this next course of action they're talking about now, filling it with the leak with polymer? That's right. Um, the, the leak you're talking about is this crack that is formed in the pit of Reactor 2. We know it's about 8 inches long, and the big concern is that there's highly radioactive water that's been leaking out of it. So uh, TEPCO, which is the company that operates the plant, has been trying to plug it. Now, they tried this morning by trying to put concrete in it. The leaks did not stop after that. Since then, they've tried a combination of sawdust, liquid polymer, which apparently absorbs a lot of, of water, and newspaper. We heard just a few hours ago that that did not solve the issue as well. So now we're hearing that TEPCO is thinking about adding color to the water so they can examine just where that water is flowing to. But clearly this company uh, having a difficult time trying to get a handle on that crack. Absolutely. Uh, give us an idea of where this water is leaking into. Well, we know that it's been leaking into the ocean. Um, over the last few days, we've heard of uh, radiation levels getting extremely high in seawater right around the plant. The last measurement we got was 4,000 times the norm in terms of radiation levels. So, um, you know, the concern is that, well, now they know where the water is coming from, but they can't figure out how to plug it. And in the meantime, highly radioactive water continues to seep out of that crack into the ocean. We're hearing that this situation could go on for months. Is that what you're hearing? And that is, in fact, for the first time today, we heard the Chief Cabinet Secretary, uh, Yukio Edano, who's really been the, the government spokesperson throughout all of this, admit that it will take uh, months for this to settle down. Um, we've, we've heard the talk for, for uh, several weeks since the quake has hit, but uh, this is the first time we've heard government officials come out and say, yes, in fact, this is not something that will take weeks but months. And knowing that, what kind of environmental uh, backlash, what, what is the fallout from this? Well, you know, it's tough to say because it seems like both the company that operates this plant and the government is having a difficult time getting a handle on, number one, how much radiation is, is seeping into the air and then how much is going into the water as well. Uh, in the meantime, we're also, you know, we've also heard over the last few weeks of some uh, radiation going into the water, some going into produce. And so it's tough at this point to gauge how widespread all of this is. This is something we'll learn over the next weeks and months. But uh, I think uh, we can say without a doubt that this is going to be pretty widespread, not just limited to um, the area directly around the plant. And Akiko, how are residents reacting to government and nuclear industry efforts? Uh, is there a lot of growing frustration? There is growing frustration. We're also hearing that um, TEPCO workers, the Tokyo Electric workers, are receiving death threats. Um, you know, we, we had been talking initially after the quake about how, how calm people were and how understanding they were of the situation, but there is a frustration growing. There's a sense, uh, at least among Japanese people, that the com company in charge of all this really doesn't have a handle on the situation, and you're starting to see that backlash. Last weekend, we saw protesters outside Tokyo Electric, so we are starting to see anger build as the situation now enters uh, week three. And finally and quickly, what is the status of the evacuees? Um, well, the evacuees, we know, um, I guess when you look at the larger picture of victims, we know more than 11,000 have died. There are more than 10,000 still missing. Some evacuees are being moved to other cities right now while temporary housing is made ready. So uh, that's another situation we're watching. Um, temporary housing could take months uh, and, and longer to build. Akiko Fujita with ABC News, thanks so much for the update. We do appreciate it.